There had to be some great power. It has to be God. And God loves our country and he thinks we're going to bring our country back. You were spared for a reason. Well, God believes that, I guess. Was Donald Trump sent by God to save the United States of America? I don't know. But if you look at the facts, you could make a pretty solid argument. Think of everything they've tried to do to Donald Trump since he, since he became president of the United States. First, they tried to call him a liar and say he was colluding with Russia, which he never did. Then he became president and they tried to impeach him, which they successfully impeached him, but unsuccessfully removed him from office. Then they impeached him again in 24 hours. And then after that, they didn't even stop. Because he was a one-term president and they were all petrified with fear about a second term popping up, they decided to go after Donald Trump on a personal level. They went after his businesses. They went after his family. They went after his freedom. They tried to go after Donald Trump as some kind of sexual predator. They tried to go after Donald Trump as some kind of tax cheat. 91 indictments over and over and over again. Donald Trump was flying back and forth from court to a rally, from court to a rally, from court to some press appearance, back to a rally, back to court for a year. And when none of that worked, when all of that failed, when Donald Trump still one primary after primary after primary, when Donald Trump still knocked out all of the competition, Doug Burgum, bam, Chris Christie, pachow, Vivek Ramaswamy, see ya. After all of that failed, what happened? The one thing that they could think of, which was an assassination attempt on his life. Somebody wanted Donald Trump gone, not just out of the primary, not just out of the campaign, not just out of the presidential election, but out of this world. And they tried to put a bullet in his head and they failed miserably. The eternal battle that's been going on since the beginning of time, since the beginning of our history, between good and evil, between God and Satan, between all things that are right and moral and, and profound and good, and all things that are evil and bad and horrible and awful and just the worst. There is inherent good and there is inherent evil, and they are represented by God and the devil. And Donald Trump spoke, sat down with Dr. Phil the other day, and Dr. Phil asked him about these very things. Why is it, Dr. Phil says, that you are not dead? Why is it that that bullet did not kill you? Why is it that you're sitting here with me today? Why were you spared? So there had to be some great power, because you just can't say millions to one, millions to one. I used to say a million to one. It's much more than that, because again, you have to pull down the sign. You have to, there has to be a reason to go right. And I never go right. There's no reason. And not only go right, it's for about an eighth of a second. It's not just right. It's out of all the time that we're on this planet, it's one eighth of a second, right? One eighth of a second saved Donald Trump's life. One eighth of a second of all the times that he goes right, he didn't. Of all the times that he goes left, he changed it up. What was it that changed so much that altered the outcome of this particular attack? Why is it that all of these things fell into place at the exact right moment to spare Donald Trump from the forces of evil? It had to have been God divine intervention. Donald Trump knew it immediately when it happened. Millions and millions of other Christians around the world knew it as soon as it happened. And now Dr. Phil is reminding everyone who's watching that maybe that's exactly what happened. Is there a purpose? Uh, well, is there a reason you think you were spared? I mean, the only thing I can think is that God loves our country and he thinks we're going to bring our country back. He wants to bring it back. It's so bad right now what's happening when you look at the crime, the the horrible things that are happening inside our country and it can be solved. It can be solved fairly quickly. It, it has to be God. I mean, how can you say God. it's luck when it's, you know, 20 million to one? God loves our country. God loves our country, even though our country doesn't necessarily love God, at least not the way that it used to. But God knows. God understands. God knows that there's hope. God knows that there is still good in the United States of America. This country was founded by immigrants, of course, who were fleeing religious persecution. The Puritans who came over to this country from Europe, they came here because they wanted a place where they could worship God the way they wanted to. And God delivered them to the shores of the United States of America. And God helped them weather the storm. And God helped them build communities. And then when they started getting persecuted for other reasons, God helped them fight back so that they could enjoy their God-given freedoms of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. God gave us those rights. The founding fathers of this country, religious men all, 
made sure that we had a document and a form of government and a blueprint that protected the God-given rights, the unalienable rights granted by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Thomas Jefferson didn't give us those rights. James Madison didn't give us those rights. George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Alexander Hamilton. We did not get those rights from any of those guys. We got them from God and they made sure that we still have them today. And we need a leader who's gonna make sure that we still have them today. And God says, that's Donald Trump. So we gotta protect that guy at all costs. And you believe in God? I do, I do. You believe God's hand was in this that day? I believe so, yeah, I do. And you talk about the country, you believe you have more to do. You weren't done. You were spared for a reason. Well, God believes that, I guess. Uh, we'll have to see. I'd like to point out the humility there. When you, you know, because people question Donald Trump as a religious person or a religious leader or somebody who claims to believe in God. The last part of that, do you believe in God? Yes, I do. And you believe he, he has more for you to do? Donald Trump doesn't say, absolutely, I am chosen by God. I was sent here by God. He's not like the Blues Brothers going, we're on a mission from God. He's not claiming to be a God. He's saying, I, I don't know, but it appears that way. I guess we'll have to see. He's basically saying, we're going to have to see what God has in store for us. But I know that whatever it was for me, it wasn't dying. It was continuing my campaign for president. It was continuing my campaign to defeat the powers of evil, AKA Kamala Harris and the Democrat party and reinstate myself in the White House so that I can do all of these great things that I've decided we need to do, that I promised the people of this country we're gonna do so that we can continue to protect the rights that God gave us of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Listen to the humility one more time. You believe you have more to do. You weren't done. You were spared for a reason. Well, God believes that, I guess. Uh, we'll have to see. God believes that, I guess. We'll have to see. That is not somebody who is arrogant. That is not a demagogue. A demagogue would never say, I don't, I don't know. I guess God will have to see what God has in store. They would say, no, of course I'm supposed to do more. Of This is proof positive that I'm supposed to be president of the United States. And you know, people always, they always come out and they're like, would God choose someone like Donald Trump? Someone like Donald Trump, someone who's gruff and rich and says mean things about women and calls people ugly and sleepy and comrade and, and, and horse face. But the fact of the matter is that people are imperfect and God chooses imperfect people to do his work. And if you don't believe me, go look at John the Baptist. That guy was a kook. And people were scared of John the Baptist. People thought John, he wore these weird animal skins and wandered around mumbling about baptizing people and sandals. And it wasn't until Jesus Christ approached John the Baptist and said, please baptize me in the river Jordan, that John the Baptist became the kind of spiritual leader that everybody else would then follow, that everybody else recognized was chosen by God. John the Baptist, literally chosen by Jesus. Please baptize me. Okay, boom. All of a sudden, John the Baptist is one of the holiest figures we have, all because he was chosen by God. Donald Trump, we don't know if he was chosen by God to continue to lead this country, but we know one thing. He wasn't chosen by God to die in Butler, Pennsylvania, when that bullet flew through the air. He was chosen to turn his head so that he could be here today and so that he could reinstate himself into the White House.